Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 8 of Introduction to Symbolic Computation. Today we look into the data structures aspects of symbolic computation, some of them. Um, so if you work over a finite field, then the arithmetical operations can actually be executed by a table lookup. So that's what I hope to explain in the first part. If we want to evaluate expressions efficiently, then we start with a binary expression tree. And an, if we traverse this expression tree in the postfix order, then we get a stack representation of the expression which can be used then as a program to evaluate the expression efficiently. Okay, but let us uh, recap. Uh, why do we uh, look into these uh, number fields? Um, so computers are binary. So we work module two. Uh, if you want to work modulo 4, then something goes wrong here. Uh, multiplying 2 by 2 uh, then results in 0 modulo 4. Um, so we can't really talk about 1 half. Uh, so 2 has no multiplicative inverse. It is a 0 divisor. Uh, but still, uh, we want to work with fields of four elements, eight elements, 16 elements. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, well, we start by taking a polynomial that doesn't factor, uh, a polynomial with coefficients that are bits uh, zero and one. So we can enumerate all of them. And here we find one, x squared plus x plus one doesn't factor, it is irreducible. Then we can extend uh, the modulo 2 integer field with this polynomial by adding alpha as a root of this irreducible factor. Uh, of this irreducible polynomial, we add this alpha to the field. So now we have the original bits and also all multiples of this root alpha. So we have two coefficients, two for A, two possibilities for B. So we have in total four numbers. Uh, the alpha square simplifies to alpha plus one. So we can explicitly enumerate the four elements in this extended in this extension of the modulo 2 numbers. Okay, um, I indicated the simplification of alpha square as alpha plus 1, but to do the addition and the multiplication very efficiently, one can work up with lookup tables. Uh, so we can, for the four elements, we can say, here are the four elements, and these are the four elements where we add zero to this. Then we add one to the elements, so one plus one is zero, so we keep on working module two. Uh, we add one to alpha, if we add one to alpha plus one, we have alpha again, etc. We build up the rows of this table by adding every element to every other element. And we see that on the diagonal we have zeros. Uh, so every element is its own negative, just like with over the modulo 2 arithmetic. We can do the same for the multiplication. Now, of course, if we multiply by zero, everything becomes zero. Also, uh, if we multiply by one, everything stays the same. But you see that if we multiply, here there is something interesting happening, that we have added alpha. Alpha 
1 over alpha is alpha plus 1. And 1 over alpha plus 1 is alpha. So that is what you can read off from this multiplication table. So the position of the 1s. So what the multiplication also shows is that except for 0, every element has a multiplicative inverse. So we can do 1 over 1, 1 over alpha, 1 over alpha plus 1. So that makes that we speak of a field. So we have a number field. So we will see in Sage how to do this uh, construction. Uh, in Sage, this is already provided by the Galois field. Uh, so we have, so the group, so the working modulo 4 will not result in very nice multiplication laws. Uh, this is an example here. This field extension is an example of a Galois field of order of size 4. And we will see how in Sage they are already built in. Okay, um, the second uh, data structure aspect in this lecture is the representation of the if expressions. And the expressions that, the data structures that we are uh, consider here are constructed for fast evaluation. Uh, so we will see the structure of general expressions later. Here we consider the problem of evaluating expressions fast. Um, so what is a binary expression tree? It's a binary tree. So every node has at most two, it's actually in, in, in this case, uh, we consider a binary tree. So every node has two children. The children can have, again, children, or they can be leaves in the tree. A leaf is either a constant or it is an operant. Uh, so for the example below, you see that we have the constants 2, 3, 4, and we have the operands x and y. So the x and the y are the inputs to this expression. The constants and the operands are at the leaves. At the nodes, so nodes that are not leaves, they have children. At the nodes, we have the arithmetical operators. So we have the plus at the root the exponentiation and the multiplication. Okay, what do we do with this? Why do we construct this? While well, we are interested in the evaluation, um, we can build up uh, a stack representation of the expression. So if we would run through the tree, then we can do this infix, so, or in order. It means that we first traverse everything at the left. We write the, we visit the node, and then we visit we everything at the right. So here you see this is what is called the infix notation. So this is how you would spell out the in the expression where you want to focus, you translate the mathematical notation into the operator notation. Very useful, by the way, if you want to count the cost, the arithmetical cost for evaluation of an expression. So this is just the infix is the natural order, how we would read an expression. Uh, one can read this expression also as functions. Uh, so in the prefix notation, one could say that an arithmetical operator is a function of two arguments. 
and the two arguments are then obtained by looking at the prefix order of the two children. Fine, that's one representation. Uh, the most advantageous operation, and you can see this also by just looking very briefly at these three possibilities, you see that the brackets in the last expression are no longer needed. So the, the, the brackets are needed in infix and prefix to impose the order of the evaluation. In the postfix traversal, we first traverse the leaves before we get to the internal nodes. So if you focus here on this subtree, we first write the two operands before we write the operator. And we continue with this. So we first write the left, then we write the right before we write the operator. And at the end, at the very end, we have the root of the tree. So this seems rather um, artificial at first. If you haven't taken a course in data structures, then um, this might be uh, awkward. But note that this gives an, an unambiguous way to evaluate the expression. The brackets are no longer needed. And what happens is that we can use a stack to evaluate. We push the two operands, x and 3. We also, when an operator comes in, we pop the operands and we push so the popping of the stack means that we remove x and 3 and we push on the stack the result of the evaluation x to the power 3. And we do the same over here. OK, so we will see how we can build uh, these representations in Sage with the symbolic uh, computer algebra system. Okay, I have a Jupyter notebook prepared, um, where there are two parts in the notebook. I will start with the lookup tables if you want to do efficiently an operation on a finite field. And then I will uh, go back to the uh, traversals. Okay, so let me make everything from scratch. So the advantage of these pre-recordings is that you can see me gradually building up the notebook. In the lecture, sometimes there is insufficient time to go through this step by step. So our first topic are the addition and the multiplication tables. So I started with a section heading, but actually the best way to start is simply to think about uh, good names of your notebooks, so don't are left with lots of untitled. Um, so it's also very good to say what we are doing. So in this lecture, in lecture 8 of MCS 320, we consider evaluation of arithmetical expressions over finite fields and the execution, which is also the evaluation of expressions. Okay, um, over finite fields. So first of all, it is important we will construct or we want a finite field of size 4, working modulo 4 will not work because of the 2 times 2 mod 4 equals 0. Okay, therefore we start from Z2. Z2 
are the integers modulo 2. So I named them Z2. So let me um, show that Sage knows this. So otherwise I have to keep on working with integers. Uh, so I make an abbreviation. All right, uh, so now I had my irreducible polynomial. Uh, so we can enumerate the irreducible polynomials. So with a, an irreducible irreducible polynomial of degree 2, for example, we pick qx square plus x plus 1 in zz2 in the space of all polynomials in x with coefficients in zz2. Z Uh, so we've seen earlier in an earlier lecture how to compute with symbolic expressions, compute with symbols X and letters A, B, C. It's important that here we don't work with general expressions, but we work with polynomials. So we must declare a polynomial ring, I call this capital P, and this will be the polynomial ring over of all polynomials in X with coefficients modulo 2. And you see that Sage already tells that we are working over a Galois field of size 2. So the GF2 so the GVF abbreviates Galois field. Okay, so now I can define the polynomial. And let me verify that it does not factor. So the polynomial Q is irreducible. Two things that we did. So we declared our polynomial field. So the first thing is that we had the uh, polynomial. Actually, the first thing was that we had the polynomial ring, the capital P. Then we have the polynomial that doesn't factor. Now I called it Q. Uh, you could also work with the little p and the capital P, but if you're tired or not really paying attention, you will forget about the case sensitivity. So here I called it Q. Okay, now I'm ready for the field extension. So the field extension, I will call it K. And I have to pick another letter, A, for the root. So I'm going to be extending Z2 with a root of Q. And it suffices to have one root there. Uh, if you add one root, then you can factor away. So the polynomial will factor as x plus a, and the other root will be a plus 1. So we have a finite field. I can list all the elements. So here you see all the elements listed. So let me document what we did. So we defined the extension of Z2, so the ring modulo 2, the integers modulo 2, with a root A of the polynomial x squared plus x plus 1. And the extension k has four elements. Oh, 
אוקיי. Good. So, I want to illustrate the addition tables and the multiplication tables. I can do this with one instruction, uh, but let me do this explicitly in Python. So, I will take all elements and I will print the product of all these elements with every with all the other elements. So you see two for loops. So typically for two dimensional tables, uh, the control structure that corresponds with this is a double loop. Um, I'm using the second the inner loop inside a list. So I'm building a list comprehension. So this makes for a very nice output. So here I have the multiplication table, and actually I should have started with the addition table. Let me modify this. So the addition table. I will have to change the star and a plus. So this is the addition table. Uh, so you see that when I'm adding, so I have the elements in the list. So x runs over 0, 1, a, a plus 1. So that's the first x that I'm doing. I'm taking 0. So x is 0. And then y runs over all the elements again. So 0 plus 0, 0 plus 1, 0 plus a, 0 plus a plus 1. So nothing changes here. Uh, so what you see from this table is that on the diagonal, I pointed this out also, uh, every element still is its own inverse. 1 plus 1 is still 0 modulo 0. A plus A is 2 times A, but 2 is 0 modulo 2. Okay, so you see that uh, A and A plus 1, if you do A plus A plus 1, you have... 1, um, and that there is symmetry, so everything commutes. All right, so then let's build the multiplication table. We do this very explicitly here. Uh, it's a good uh, introduction or a refresher of Python. Um, so multiplying everything by zero gives zero. Multiplying everything by one doesn't change anything either. So the first two rows and the first two columns are not a surprise. Uh, we see that now with the position of the ones, so the ones are standing at the same location as the addition, but we actually see that if you multiply a by a plus 1, you actually get uh, 1 back. Uh, so you can verify that you can do 1 over a, that gives you a plus 1. Alright, I probably should show you the build-in instructions for the addition table. So here you see the uh, same structure. Uh, perhaps I should probably do this first for the multiplication table because it's better to compare. So here you see the multiplication table with symbols. So you can do some pattern matching and see that what I call zero corresponds to the A and I have the B, the C and the D um, for the other group elements. So you see that B corresponds to one, C corresponds to A and D corresponds to A plus 1. So I can also ask for the multiplication table of the Galois field of four elements. 
and you see that I get exactly the same. So we Sage already has predefined the Galois field of uh, four elements. So you see that we have constructed with K the Galois field of four elements known as GF4 here. So if you ever need to do to compute with a field in four elements, you actually use GF4. Um, so the nice thing about uh, the construction that we did explicitly is that you can have a better understanding and appreciation of this construction. Okay. Um, you can also indeed compute the addition table, so let me do that as well for completeness. So I have the addition table of our k that we made, and then I have the addition table of the Galois field of four elements. And you see that they are identical. So as groups, we can identify the K with GF4. So as uh, number fields, they are identical. And the, the, the punchline, of course, for data structures, if you need to program this, we were working in the previous lecture with field extensions, or in one of the previous extensions, with field extensions of the rational number fields. Then indeed, if you want to define the arithmetical operations, you must write functions. Here, with small fields in particular, it's much better to work with uh, tables, lookup tables. Okay, so I'm halfway, so let me go to the second part and let me uh, discuss uh, binary expression trees. Um, so here we are interested in the evaluation. So we want to execute a fast execution of the arithmetical operations when evaluating um, an expression. Okay, so I will uh, import the expression tree builder from Sage extension. So this belongs to an extension. And I actually have to cheat a little bit. I have to check my uh, preparation. So I am have the fast callable where I'm importing the expression tree builder. Uh, I'm making an instance of the expression tree builder. Where I will use as variable names the letters X and Y. And let me verify this, what it is that I'm actually doing here. So I have an object that I can be using, and I will write an expression in X and in Y. So here is my expression. I have um, x to the power 3, 4 times x times y to the power 3. So now you see that when I print this, uh, 
I get something that's quite unexpected. Um, so I hope that the slides prepared you for this and it's not entirely a shock what you see here. Um, so backing up a little bit, uh, I was working before with a polynomial in X. Uh, why it was a polynomial in X with uh, modulo 2 integers? Because I had declared a polynomial. Here I'm actually doing something uh, very similar. I'm declaring the variables x and y, but they belong to the expression tree builder. So they are the symbols that are used in the expression, expression tree builder object from the fast callable module. So what do we see? Well, in the parlance of the beginning of this lecture, we see the infix notation of the expression P. So the infix expression, uh, the infix notation of this expression can help us to build the expression tree. Uh, note that I often talk about the expression tree, but it's actually not really canonical. So with the commutativity, whether you multiply 4 with x or x with 4, uh, there is actually still some, um, and same with here, if you multiply one with the other, uh, so there is a lot of variation there. So there are many uh, possible expression trees that all define the same outcome. Okay, let me build the expression tree. So I will define the expression tree will be constructed from the bottom up. starting with the leaves. So the leaves in the binary expression tree are either the operands, so here they are denoted by V0 and V1, which are the symbols X and Y, and we have the constants 3 and 4. So we have two inputs and we have two constants. So we will have four different leaves. Uh, you could say that on the picture we had six leaves, but I will not uh, make duplicates. So my first, I will start reading from left to right. I will be using a labeled binary tree. So for this you do not need to import anything. So this is part of the uh, build in. So it is a leaf, so it has no children, no left child, no right child, and it is a labeled tree. I will label it here with the string v0 so that it corresponds to what we've seen above. So um, then we have the other leaves. So in this pre-recording, I will uh, duly type in everything nicely. Uh, during the actual lecture, uh, so th this is recommended activity that you do this as well to gain some practice. Um, So I will do this systematically. If you have somewhere an itch, uh, this is not a programming course, but as you see me kind of uh, doing this step by step, then you may be inclined to feel the urge to write a program uh, that uh, produces these instructions. So I will execute these four instructions and I receive no error. 
Um, so this is the advantage of practice. Um, then I will make uh, my first subtree using the uh, power. So I will be using leaves one and two. So this is an inner node. And now I cannot use none and none. I have to use L1 and L2. And the label is the IPAL. I think I used the carrot, but uh, in the. So there is some freedom here, artistic freedom. So here you see that I made my first tree uh, a binary tree, two children. The leaves are. One of the leaves is an operant, the other one is a constant, and the node, at the node, I have the operator. So then let's read further. I have two more nodes to make. I will make them, um, probably it's good to make them uh, one after the other. So I have uh, node 3 that connects one, so I'm using L for leaves, N for nodes, and uh, the labeling is using the leaves, the labels of the leaves. So I have a multiplication as my second one. And it's good practice to essentially try this out. See if this is really what you want. So this is the four times x that we see. So here coded up as this multiplication. Then the next one that I will do is again a power v1 to the power. So I'm using v1, so I'm using 4, and it's to the power 3, so it's 4, 2. L4, L2, and the label is again a power. Okay, I'm almost there. So I had the left part and a right part. So now I have all the small trees. Uh, let me make my first big tree. So that will be n31 and then followed by n42. So this is a labeled binary tree that has as children n31 and n42 is the right child. And this is, was again a multiplication. All right, so this likes this starts to look more like a good tree. So now I have my final tree, where I take as left child my first tree that I made. So that was n. Let me scroll up to indicate it. So this was n one two, and the right child is n three one four. And the operator is an addition. So this is the expression that I was using to, um, so let me make the point again. I had P. Uh, so if I print P, because the string representation of this polynomial in the expression builder is the um, infix, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it is the prefix notation. So uh, we see, did I just write that wrong here? No, I, yes, I wrote this wrong. So the infix notation is what is over here. Uh, here I have the 
function. So first I have the, so here I have the prefix notation. Could that I correct this? So this is the prefix notation. So when you traverse the tree, you first write the arithmetical operation. So you first write the node, and then you write the children. So let me, um, because I made this mistake. So if you traverse the tree, you first write the content of the node, then you write the left tree, and then you write the right tree. So with the left tree, you first write the content of the node before writing the children. Okay, so uh, we have the infix notation. So very pedantically, let me say that this is the infix notation. So that's the uh, classical way to write down an expression with the operator in between. Here we have the operator at front. Uh, we can go to the postfix notation to see the postfix notation, we must convert to a fast, we must convert P to a fast callable. So in a later lecture we will be uh, in concerned with how fast can you evaluate uh, expressions. Uh, this is kind of a warm-up to this. So I will make the fast callable, and then I will uh, list the operations, the operands. Okay, so here you see the program, uh, we load the input argument, and then we do x to the power 3, with that first argument v0, then we load the constant, we load the argument v0, and we do the multiplication. We're loading the argument v1, we do the um, exponentiation. I should have said that uh, whenever an arithmetical operation is done, the result is pushed on the stack. So here now we do the multiplication and the addition. And then we return the final result. We pop the final last number of the stack. So this is the postfix notation seen as a data structure. So it's seen as a list uh, where you either have the tuple of the operation that is done um, or you have the string representation of the operation that is executed. Okay, so uh, I'm saving and the last operation just whenever you uh, kind of want to save everything nicely I did some backtracking, so I've executed 25 statements. Uh, so let me see if I um, restart the kernel and run everything. Then everything runs rather fast, and I have uh, 22 instructions that we have executed during this recording. So we have a nice notebook um, that illustrates some of the data structures aspects of symbolic computation. So if you have taken data structures, so then this is an application. If you have not taken data structures, this is kind of an introduction too. So it gives you kind of a feeling uh, why trees are very interesting to computer science. Uh, I should have said that all trees in computer science, they actually grow uh, from the root up downward. So uh, this is actually a tree with the gravity reversed. Um, 
Okay, I hope this uh, pre-recording is interesting and useful. Um, a version of this Jupyter Notebook and also the slides, they are available at the course website.